Hi, so in this video, I'd like to do a multi-part series uh, of actually a series of videos that talks a bit more in depth about botnets. Now, I'm certain if you've had any interest in malware uh, at all, you've probably heard the term botnet used repeatedly. And so we're going to talk a bit about what a botnet is and, and what it means, etc. Now, I think I do want to mention that um, it's going to take me multiple videos to do this type of a, a deep dive. So expect uh, a, a bunch of topics. But for this first video, I'll begin by doing really just a very high level overview of what botnets are and what attackers might use them for. And, and for starters, a botnet is just a series of compromised systems. So imagine you've, you've got a bunch of uh, uh, systems uh, on the internet somewhere uh, and they're uh, endpoints and they're running uh, some operating system. And, and uh, a botnet is just basically a series of these systems that have been compromised and they're really under the control of an attacker. So imagine these are all compromised systems and they can all be controlled by some type of an attacker. And that attacker is uh, known as a bot master. So you here have, a, let's say, an attacker um, who's operating a computer here, and, and uh, this is uh, called a bot master. Okay, and it's, it's a person who is typically operating a computer, so let's give him a face. And the bot master um, basically controls all these systems, and they all kind of report to the bot master and ask him uh, what they should be doing next and, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, another name by the way for a bot master is also a bot herder. So if you ever hear that terminology, that's what it means. It's, it's a synonym for bot master. Uh, and it's also important to keep in mind, and we'll talk about this in more detail later on, that the bot master may in fact, uh, this machine that the bot master operates and controls these bots, it may actually be one of the botnet machines itself that is being used as the uh, as the command and control center. So that's a new piece of terminology that I do want to mention, which is that in their simplest incarnation, a bot is controlled by something called a command and control server. So a command uh, and control server. And that would be uh, this machine in this case. And really, the, the systems uh, in the botnet are controlled by the command and control server. And usually the, the protocol of which they communicate, they might actually communicate to the server uh, via protocols like uh, IRC or HTTP. And I'll, I'll go into some more detail on what these protocols mean and, and uh, you know, how you can distinguish different types of bots based on the actual protocol. Uh, but suffice it to say that the command and control server effectively just transmits commands uh, to the bot infected hosts. Uh, although the, the bot master is himself or herself is the, the actual person pulling the strings and is the actual kind of brains behind the operation. They're just basically using the command and control server to push out the commands. Now, the commands that can be issued to a botnet are, are fairly generic in nature. So the botnets can be used for uh, all sorts of nefarious purposes. And in fact, uh, some researchers even call uh, bots the, the Swiss army knife of malware. Uh, and the reason for that is because they can be used for pretty much anything you want to do that's bad, you can, you can somehow do with a botnet. So you can think of them as Swiss Army knives uh, of, uh, of malware. Now, what's interesting about botnets, uh, though, is that you know, they're often rented out by the bot herder to some other online miscreants. So for example, you might have somebody who wants to do something bad on the internet. Uh, they, don't, they need a compromised machine or a machine they can control. And the bot herder will, in fact, control all these systems. He'll rent out these systems to people who want to do other bad stuff. So there's kind of an uh, a supply chain, if you will, uh, in this underground economy of, uh, of systems that are compromised. Now, what are some of the, the critical apps? So let, let's talk about some of the, uh, the killer apps of botnets. So um, what are some of the killer apps? Why are botnets so popular and what are they mostly used for? Um, well, one of the first killer apps of, of a botnet, uh, believe it or not, is spam. And this surprises most people. Um, and I'm mentioning it first because it turns out to be one of the most critical um, implications for what botnets can do. And, and the reason that spam is, is interesting is you would basically have these nodes on the botnet, and if you, let's say you're a spammer, uh, so let's say you have a spammer here and he wants to send out a bunch of emails to people and uh, they're spam emails, he might actually rent out uh, from a bot master a subset of machines, provide those machines with emails to send out, and then those machines would then in turn send out uh, those emails to other people on the internet, okay? Uh, and so uh, you would have emails being sent out from these machines that are all spam. Okay, to, and, and maybe this is for the internet at large. So imagine have the internet at large receiving spam emails uh, from a botnet. Now the reason that uh, 
the botnets are so popular for, for sending out spam, and this, it's actually twofold. Uh, first of all, it's important to note that, that this is pretty much the killer app for botnets, and the reason for that is that spam activity can be monetized. So if you are a spammer, uh, you're typically making money off of spam. You may not be making, you may not be having a high conversion rate because you're sending out a lot of spam and getting a very low hit rate, but these spammers are making enough money for this enterprise to be profitable for them. Uh, the second thing is that uh, if you use a botnet to send out spam, um, even if you're able to identify, let's say that, that secure researchers are able to identify that, hey, there's a machine out here that's sending out spam and they're able to shut this machine down uh, somehow. If, even if they can take this one machine offline, there's now a number of other machines that can crop up in its place. Let, let's say even if I find all these three machines, if I'm an anti-spam company, um, and even if I shut these three machines down, took them off the internet and prevented them from sending spam again, uh, the bot master uh, can now just unleash three more machines and, and these three machines can now be used to send out spam. So the idea is that uh, having a botnet send out spam adds a level of resilience. And, and uh, as an example of this, I mean, to, to give you ideas of, of some of the magnitude, uh, there was a botnet a while ago called, uh, actually a piece of malware called Rustock. And the botnet associated with Rustock was used to send out about uh, 25,000 messages per hour per infected host. So in other words, for every single host, uh, every single one of these nodes was sending out 25,000 messages per host every single hour. Uh, just to give you an idea of just the level of magnitude of, uh, of, of botnets and, and how much they can be used to, to send out uh, spam and, and do other kinds of malicious activity. So I'm going to uh, kind of pause this video here. Um, in the next video, I'll continue talking about botnets and some of their other applications. But I wanted to start off with spam since that's the killer app. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk some more about other applications of botnets. Thanks a lot, and I hope you join me there.